Welcome everyone to the destin destination Ulster presentation for paramedic science. My name is Paul Corns. I'm the course director for the paramedic science program here at Ulster. And um, thanks for all joining us. Hopefully today I can give you a insight into what it is like to study paramedic science here at Ulster University give you an idea of the, the career perhaps as well and, and give you an overview of what to expect from a career as a paramedic. And hopefully by the end of the presentation, you'll have a good idea as to um, what it would be like to come and join us here. So the Paramedic Science Programme is based out of our McGee campus. And our McGee campus is right in the middle of um, Derry, London Derry, which is a really vibrant city, plenty going on. And it's also been said to be one of the most affordable places to live in the UK, which is good too. So our aim for the paramedic science programme here is to help you to become a competent and confident paramedic. And we aim to do that by delivering education that allows you to become a person-centred, evidence-informed care professional. In my brief talk today, I really want to cover why we think you should come and study BSc Honours Paramedic Science here at Ulster. We'll go over how you will learn when you would be here with us, how you would be taught, how would we support you through your programme here, and also to have a look at what the future possible careers are for paramedics, which is ever evolving, as I'm happy to introduce to you later on. So the Paramedic Science Programme here at Ulster is uh, very new. It's a very exciting time to be thinking about joining our programme as we welcomed our first cohort in September 2021 and they're getting along with their first year and they're all doing really well. And some of the things that set us apart from other universities are that we take a, a very varied and modern approach to teaching and learning. We make sure our, our learning is all very active and making sure all of our programme whether that's something that's more theory based and obviously when you're out on practice based learning, making sure it's all very applicable to the types of situations and clinical practice that you'd encounter in your career as a paramedic. You can see there as well, we have purpose built simulation settings and areas to help contextualize the learning that we deliver. And you can see we've got our own simulants, if you like, set up in one of our clinical skills room, which, which really helps our students to get a, a feel for, for what it is like to, to be working in the, the back of an ambulance. I think one of the things that stands out with the programme here at Ulster is how we have adopted a um, approach to our practice based learning. So with many healthcare profession um, programmes rather, that a lot of your time is spent out in um, clinical settings, in practice-based learning. And I think one of the things that is really exciting about our programme here is that we don't just expect our students to go out into placements and, and practice-based learning with ambulance services, with our partner organisation, Northern Ireland Ambulance Service, but really we want to introduce our students to a really wide range of clinical settings and that could be from nursing homes, residential homes, areas where you can um, look after and, and help people with learning disabilities or with mental health challenges, right through to being able to work in areas in um, primary care settings, such as community placements within emergency departments, as well as plenty of time spent out in ambulances with our partner organisation. So there's some of the reasons why we think you should come and study paramedic science here with us at, at Ulster. So you will learn how to become a paramedic and how to start your career as a paramedic. We can um, offer this kind of achieve or achievable outcomes to, to anyone really. You do need to have um, obviously meet their entry requirements, but we can take people who um, have had a wide range of backgrounds at different stages in their lives and um, careers and help them to develop to become that person-centred paramedic once they finish the programme here. 
So we'll not only teach uh, and allow you to learn some of the fundamentals of biological science, but also deliver and, and help you develop the practical skills that you're going to need to assess and treat people in the, the big wide range of settings that you find yourself in pre-hospital care. At the core of our programme and at the core of all of the healthcare programmes within Ulster University is the person-centred framework. And that really means that we uh, are looking to develop practitioners who move away from treating patients and move towards treating or, or helping people. So making sure like, as you can see in the center of this framework here, making sure that the people who you do care for have person-centered outcomes. They're at the center of the outcomes of the care interaction. And that's something that's weaven and, and wove through all of our program. So our program, the VSC Honours program, is a full-time three years. And over the, the course of the three years, it's about 50% in university and about 50% of your time will be spent in practice-based learning. And as you can see later on in the presentation, as you work through the, the three years of the program, you'll spend an increasing amount of time in practice-based learning to develop you towards the end of your third year to be able to go straight out to, in, to employment within um, most commonly ambulance services. So just to introduce some of the modules that you can expect to find within our program in year one, we look to build the foundations and those foundations of professional practice and the foundations of human health and development as well. We'll also look at how you can become a person-centered practitioner through our introduction to person-centered assessment module. And in each year of the program, we have a practice-based learning experience. And then in year two, we, we look to build on that foundational year in year one to help you to apply assessment and management towards paramedic practice, looking to develop you and, and help you to achieve, to be able to achieve critical appraisal of evidence, to layer on more with your assessment, to look at the pharmacology um, behind the, the drugs and medications that are available to paramedics in today's healthcare context. And then into year three, we look to um, really develop those complex assessment skills and decision making, which really help drive, uh, which really help drive forward the paramedic um, career and the paramedic profession. And also in year three as well, there will be opportunity for you to um, develop your evidence and clinical governance by looking closely at an area of paramedic practice. Um, looking at the evidence behind that and drawing together a, a dissertation as well. This is an indicative overview of the program and this may well change as, as we go through. There will be some slight adaptations to it, but I think the, the core layout will remain similar. And you can see the areas in green and I'll just highlight these in year one. These areas in green are academic weeks where you'll be in university on campus with us here at McGee and then the areas in blue are our practice-based learning as you can see and I'll draw your attention to this end column here within the the first year of the program you'll spend 24 weeks with us here on campus in university and then you'll spend 15 weeks out with our practice-based partners and in year one, as I mentioned earlier in the program, we allow you the opportunity to really develop those fundamentals of care practice within areas such as um, residential homes, settings that um, care for people with learning disabilities. And then further on towards the end of the, the second block in year one, you'll be introduced to working in emergency vehicles alongside paramedics. And then really not to, to go over each year in exact detail, but you can see as we progress through the program, more time is spent in practice-based settings 
and more time is spent with NIAS, with Northern Ireland Ambulance Service in um, emergency vehicles. So as you go through the programme, the amount of time spent in practice increases, as does the amount of time spent working in um, emergency vehicles as well. But we think it's really important that you don't just spend all of your placement in emergency vehicles, but that you get the opportunity to look at different healthcare settings to see how paramedics and the care that paramedics can provide fits into the, the wider picture of the healthcare um, settings and healthcare services within Northern Ireland. So this is a full-time course and you will be expected to be in class for up to four days a week. There is a significant amount of expectation that you will be um, adult learners and in that respect you know the amount of time you should put in outside of the classroom should be maybe three or four times as much as time as you spend in the classroom. We have a um, very supportive virtual learning environment in Blackboard Learn where you will have access to all of the, the module content, in, including lecture materials, including links to videos. And that is a, a great um, source for all the information that you may need within the academic program and for um, administrative support as well. So you will be taught by a primarily by a team of paramedic teaching staff lecturers such as myself and I've been a paramedic for up to about 10 years now and by the time we recruited our third co third cohort we will be up to nine full-time paramedic teaching staff that doesn't mean you just be taught by paramedics and I think that is another really interesting aspect of our program is that there are lots of opportunities to work alongside other healthcare students in particular, say our nursing students and be taught by nurses with experiences in different settings, not just in, in ambulances. And again, that really helps you contextualize healthcare in a, in a wider setting than just ambulance services. That said though, when you are out in practice-based learning with um, our partner organization, NIAS, you will be taught and mentored and supported by paramedics who are the practice educators when you're out with uh, on um, practice-based learning in emergency vehicle settings. Here's a few examples of our teaching spaces. We've got lots of flexible, flexible teaching spaces to allow for um, active learning. We've also got several purpose-built skills labs, which have a, a really wide range of technological support to allow us to simulate um, care interactions to a, to a very high standard to make sure when you go out to look after people for the first time in real life that you're really well prepared to go out there and um, achieve all the competencies that you need to. With regards to our assessment strategy, we want to make sure that you have a variety of opportunities to demonstrate your learning. And that's not just through um, written examinations. There's very few written examinations in our assessment strategy overall. We have a range and those include written assignments, some group work assignments, developments of posters and infographics. There are a, a, a few online tests and examinations but also importantly our practice-based learning is assessed via a portfolio which works longitudinally over the placement blocks to, to give you a really good opportunity to demonstrate your competence in a, in a big wide range of skills and abilities. And an important thing as well is that we pride ourselves on being very supportive as a team, uh, a teaching team and also as a university as well. So each of our students get assigned a advisor of studies which will be one of the paramedic lecturing team and we'll be available to support you, whether that's with, through pastoral, pastoral advice or whether it's through um, sp giving you guidance on specific assessments as they come through. The university supports our students really effectively as well. And that's through uh, student union services and also a big wide range of welfare support to support our students with any kind of issues, whether that's health related issues, 
um, learning disability related issues and with career development opportunities as well. I mentioned practice-based learning a couple of times here and, and just to emphasize that again, it, it makes up about 50% of our course. It involves around 60 weeks of learning across the three years and over half of that is going to be spent with emergency ambulance services. You'll be expected when it comes to practice-based learning to fit into the rotors of your practice supervisors and practice educators and that would be um, shift work across seven days a week um, covering nights and days and the assessment as I already mentioned is by portfolio so you'll get the opportunity to get input from several sources whether that's the practice supervisors you work with in different settings um, your, your own reflections as well to be able to demonstrate your, your competence throughout the program. So the selection process at Ulster, you can have a quick read through the indicative timeline there, which obviously may change according to various um, external factors for the 2023 recruitment cycle. But just to, as an indication, you know, around January time, the applications need to be submitted by and then we will go through um, what is normally a fairly tough selection process. Um, our first two cohorts have proven to be very popular with applicants and it's really important that you put forward as strong a personal statement as possible. So once the, we've reviewed personal statements, we will ask a um, shortlist to apply via a or to um, put in a recorded video interview. And then two of the teaching team will review and, and score those interviews to decide on the final applicants who will be granted a um, offer of a place for September 2023. And at the moment, we're looking to recruit cohorts of 40 for our um, September intakes into year one of the programme. And then once you've finished, so in September 2026, you will be eligible to register on the HCPC, so the Healthcare Professionals Council, register as a newly qualified paramedic. So once you are registered as a paramedic on the HCPC register, you can then go on to your career as a paramedic and paramedics are in demand. There is a wide range of opportunities to um, develop your career as a paramedic primarily and where I enjoyed many years was working in ambulance services as a frontline um, paramedic. And that really does involve you going out to people, to unpredictable situations, supporting people and their family through very varied and sometimes challenging and sometimes difficult situations. For newly qualified paramedics, for most ambulance trusts that employ newly qualified qualified paramedics you start on around band five and then once you've completed a newly qualified paramedic program most ambulance trusts um, salaries wise for paramedics are around the band six it's not just ambulance trusts that you can work for though when you're a qualified paramedic in particular after a few years um, experience. There are lots of opportunities and they are developing all the time within the Northern Ireland context as well to work in different areas as a paramedic, not just in an ambulance service, but perhaps say in a GP surgery in primary care. You could also specialise into particular areas of paramedicine, such as critical care paramedicine or urgent care practitioners, for example. So really the the role of a paramedic and the career for a paramedic is changing rapidly and it has changed significantly over the last 10 years. And really we want to make sure our graduates are well prepared for that changing career and for the different areas that paramedics can now work in and will hopefully be expanding as we go through and, and as the program develops as well. So to note, as it stands, the places on our paramedic science programme are commissioned by the Department of Health. So the Department of Health Northern Ireland pays the university tuition fees. 
And there is some contact details there for our admissions team. And in summary, you know, I wanted to give you an overview of what you will learn, how you will be taught and assessed, making sure that you're well aware of some of the really important aspects of our program here, and also to give you a flavor of the career opportunities for paramedics nowadays. And I hope the information has been useful to you for whilst you're considering looking to come and study here with us at McGee. And one thing to bear in mind before I do wrap up is the fact that obviously our courses do change and the content that I've covered today is like subject to change. And we will provide you once your application has been um, processed and hopefully it's been successful, we will provide you with the most up-to-date information, including module list, etc., um, in, in good time for when you join us here. So thank you for listening. I hope it's been informative and good luck with your decisions as they come up about your future prospects. And hopefully we'll see you coming to join us here on the BSc Paramedic Science Programme here at McGee.